instantaneous velocity is a concept that is both very familiar to you and also has some very deep mathematical connotations. And actually, a lot of the, well, most of the first mathematical work on this was done by Sir Isaac Newton. Sometimes the average velocity is all we need to know about an object's motion, and we've already covered average velocity in these lectures. For example, a race along a straight line is really a competition to see whose average velocity is the greatest. Recall average velocity is displacement delta x over time. So since everybody is running the same displacement, they're covering the same ground, the one who gets there quickest has the highest average velocity. Now, the average velocity of a moving object can't tell us how fast the object moves at any given point. It just gives you the average, the displacement divided by time. For example, this runner might have started off very fast and then slowed down. This runner might have started slow and sped up at the end. And you don't know which one wins based on an information. You'd have to know their average velocity. The one with the greatest average velocity was the winner. Average velocity is the change in position over time. This gives us the average velocity for a given length or span of time. If we want to know the speed or velocity at a specific point in time, what they're doing right now, not what they were doing two seconds ago or two seconds in the future, and for example a radar gun tip will tell you what your velocity is at any point, we're looking for the instantaneous velocity. So let's take a few slides and see what happens when we look for the instantaneous velocity by shrinking the amount of time we take to measure displacement or how far we're going and in which direction. Let's do an experiment. For us it will be a thought experiment, but you could actually carry this out. We have an object moving at a constant velocity. And let's say in 100 meters it covers 10 seconds. What's the magnitude of its velocity there? Well, it would be displacement over time, so the velocity would be 10 meters per second. Now let's assume we only measured the displacement during this experiment, which again for us is a thought experiment, but we only measure it for one second, and we find that in that one second this object traveled 10 meters. What's the velocity? Or the average velocity? Well, it would be 10 meters divided by one second, and once again, we get 10 meters per second. Okay, now we're definitely in the thought experiment realm because there's not too many labs in high schools that can measure to this precision both the displacement and time. But let's say we could and we go 0 0.001 meter in 0 0.0001 second. What's the velocity? We divide the two numbers and once again, and you can either work this out on your calculator or by hand, which is always good, and we once again get 10 meters per second. We could carry out a few more thought measurements down here okay where we get really really tiny displacements and really really tiny times now again we're trying to find the velocity at a particular time but that sounds like we want the velocity where time is zero how can we do that but if we really want to get instantaneous velocity we need to get time equal to zero because all we're doing here is estimating what the instantaneous time is by shrinking, ex excuse me, the instantaneous velocity by shrinking the displacement and time to a very, very small number. But it's still only an estimate. So to describe this motion in greater detail, we need to get the velocity to any specific instant of time or specific point along the path. We are going to call this velocity instantaneous velocity. Now again, words in physics don't always mean what they do in, in your, other, your other life. For example, in everyday language, you can have instant coffee, instant noodles, instant oatmeal. We may use the phrase, it lasted just an instant, to refer to something that lasted for a very, very short time interval, or something that was finished quickly. 
In physics, an instant has no duration at all. It refers to a single value of time. A common example we can use to help us understand this is driving a car and taking a quick look at the speedometer. Or if you're a passenger, you look at the speedometer. At this point, we will see the instantaneous value of the velocity. That's the velocity you're going at that one specific time. So earlier in this chapter, I talked about you're familiar with what an instantaneous velocity is. You've seen it in many places. However, mathematically is where the brilliance comes in. And this was due to Sir Isaac Newton as we seek to define what an instant value is. This now is Sir Isaac Newton and also, frankly, Leibniz from Germany. We are going to take our definition of average velocity, which is delta x over delta t, and we're going to shrink delta t so much we say that delta t approaches zero. Now you know from the math you've had already that you can never divide by zero. However, what Newton and Leibniz both did with calculus, they both invented calculus at roughly the same time in different places and sort of unknown to each other. Uh, you just shrink time to such a tiny point, it becomes almost zero. And the math that was based on this is just like I said, calculus. And Newton came up with this in his young 20s, which is pretty amazing. So we're going to define instantaneous velocity as the magnitude of the average velocity over time. However, we're going to make this time interval get very, 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 very close to zero or arbitrarily close to zero. That's called a limit that leads to calculus, and that's a little beyond what we're going to cover here, but that's what you have to look forward to.